In this video, I'm going to recap the futures price action on the MES for Wednesday, January the 24th, 2024. Please use my referral links in the description box below. You can find my referral links to Apex Trader Funding, Top Step Trader Funding, The Trading Pit, and American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Cards. If you sign up for an American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card using my link, you will receive a $75 statement credit. All right, moving on to the video, I want to first start by looking at the ES on the weekly chart and see where our candle, how, how our candle is currently looking. So as you can see, we are currently trading below the 50% point of the total range of our weekly candle. And as we uh, come into Thursday's trading, we're trading down towards the 75% of the candle's range. You can also see that uh, we we, form, we are looking like we might be forming what's called an inverted hammer candle uh, for what that is worth. So we are currently looking at a green candle and depending on how our price action looks on Thursday and Friday and how much the market wants to sell off, you could see a scenario in which this weekly candle goes all the way from a large green candle to a red shooting star candle, which would from a traditional technical analysis perspective, if this candle went and closed in the black, um, that would be a good sign that that's probably our, our latest uh, all-time high. Okay, so uh, moving down from the weekly chart that is currently in progress, let's move down to the daily chart and talk about the daily, uh, the daily candle and how it looked for Wednesday's price action. So Wednesday's price action, again, was a long wicked candle. Um, in traditional technical analysis, you would call this a spinning top candle. Now, the fact that it comes, obviously, at the high of our range would indicate to me that we're probably going to be entering a trading range now or entering a downtrend. Um, in traditional technical analysis, this spinning top candle would signify uh, a topping formation. Okay, So traditionally speaking, this candle would signify a topping formation. But again, guys, uh, I'm not saying that I have a crystal ball. I'm just telling you what, uh, what traditional technical analysis would state. ICT analysis, when we look at this, we would call this a long wick inefficiency. And from an ICT perspective, we could expect the market to at least come back up to the 50%, perhaps higher, and then potentially go ahead and trade down. All right, so from an ICT perspective, uh, Wednesday's candle was a unique candle. I mean, as you can tell, a very unique looking candle, long spinning top candle um, with a long wick inefficiency to the buy side. So the market at this point, believe it or not, is somewhat inefficient to the buy side So on the, on the daily time frame. So depending on how Thursday's action and Friday's price action want uh, to trade out, guys, I would not be surprised if Thursday and Friday or next week we have a small sort of secondary move back towards, say, 49.17, the 50% point of Wednesday's candle. Um, from an ICT perspective, the day on which you're most likely to form the week's high is Tuesday. But obviously, as you go throughout the week, all the way up until Friday, you could form a weekly high on Friday. Um, it becomes more and more likely that you have a weekly high as time expires. I would say, guys, that just looking at Wednesday's candle and the fact that we made a high at an astonishing 49.33 quarters, my guess would be that that 49.33 quarters is probably the high of this week. All right, so I would not expect Thursday's price action to trade higher than Wednesday's high. Similarly, I would not expect Friday's price action to, to get higher than Wednesday's high. I could be wrong, but, but um, I don't think so. I, I think that probably is our high of the week. Of course, I could be wrong. But those are my thoughts on that. All right, so that's looking at the daily perspective. That was a green candle. Let's now go down to an intraday perspective and look at the regular trading hours. And I'm going to show you on a one-minute chart uh, and talk you through your opportunities that you had on the one-minute chart. So remembering that the first 30 minutes of the trading day is what's called the opening range which would be delineated here at 10 o'clock. So the market opens up. You can see the regular trading hours at 0930 New York local time. Our repricing macro or our pre-market macro, as ICT would call it, he'd call it the pre-market macro. Uh, a re he calls it a pre-market uh, pre repricing macro. Anyways, um, we quick, pretty quickly formed a high uh, right off the open. 
Now, why is the opening range significant? The opening range or the first 30 minutes of trading really sets the defined boundaries of your set liquid your, your initial liquidity pools for the day. So, what do I mean by that? Your opening range, the first 30 minutes probably going to give you a high and it's going to give you a low as well that will tell you where the liquidity pools are. So we saw initially that as we our first minute candle traded distinctly lower and then the opening range started trading lower in the AM session, we knew that we had buy side liquidity above that regular trading hours high. So if you had known that, then you would be looking for opportunities to take this long on the one minute chart. Now this right here is what ICT would call an ICT breaker. So let me point that on the one minute chart. So here we have point A, and then we have a high, and then we have another low here, and that would be an ICT breaker block. But in addition to that, guys, the basic question is, all right, if I'm watching the one minute chart, what were the signs that I could go long coming into the lunch session? Well, number one, we're looking for our liquidity pools above and below price. So we know that our opening range formed a liquidity pool above that 930 high. So we know that there was buy side liquidity there. That information in and of itself is not enough to execute a trade. What could have led you to execute a trade would be this right here. So this formation here is what we call a balanced price range. All right, and in addition to that, you can see that we had an inverted fair value gap here. So when price made a low, and then we formed a fair value gap on the between the 1005 candle and the 1007 candle. I want you to take notice that this fair value gap remained open. That is what's called a breakaway gap. And at that point, you had a pretty good idea with my side sitting above um, the uh, sitting above the opening candle, with a balanced price range forming, and then with an inverted fair value gap or with or a breakaway gap. Either way, you want to look at that. That would have been a pretty strong entry for, for a buy to go and run the sell side liquidity. Sorry, the buy side liquidity. So if you're sitting down here on the one minute chart, you see the breakaway gap, you see the market, uh, try to trade back into it, but it does not come in and fill in this fair value gap. Instead, it remains open. That would have been a good sign to go long to run on this buy side liquidity. All right, guys, so let's move on to the lunch session, which we're going to call from 1200 to 1330 on the one minute chart and see some of our opportunities. So I'm going to kind of ignore the rest of the AM session. As you see, we formed a high in the AM session here at 1045 New York local time. That came in at 4931 three quarters. The market then traded down and formed this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. You can see I'm highlighting with. Uh, my cursor. As the market traded back up into that SIBI and then respected the SIBI, uh, you would have had a good idea that we were going to run on some, go, go run on some sell side liquidity, which of course we did. The market then, obviously you can see here, formed that bearish order block and ran on our minor sell side liquidity. All right, guys, now blocking out our lunch session, we mostly traded flat into on the one minute chart from 1200 to 1330 New York local time. If we come into the lunch session, where were our pools of liquidity? Well, we had a pool of liquidity to the sell side here, and then obviously we had a pool of buy side liquidity here. Um, the market looked like it might have been running on this sell side liquidity, didn't, didn't make it there, it ended up rerunning on buy side liquidity. What could you have seen that would have indicated to you that we were going to run on that buy side liquidity? Well, remember that the lunch session to begin with is what's called the lunchtime macro. So an ICT macro is a defined time frame in the market in which ICT would expect there to be a run on liquidity. So we're looking at our prior highs, we're looking at our prior lows and our rejection blocks to identify where the pools of liquidity are. And then we want to take our best guess on which direction, the buy side or the sell side, that the market is going to run on. So in this case, we ran on the buy side liquidity, and let's see what could have indicated that and when you, when you would have known. So as you can see right here, we again formed a breakaway gap that the market did not want to trade back into, which was a good sign that we were going to run on that buy side liquidity. In addition to that, 
we formed our lows above the rejection block here. And so that would have been another sign that the market was running on buy side liquidity. And finally, uh, this sort of two bar reversal pattern uh, in classic technical analysis, this two bar reversal was a decent sign. So all things taken together, you could have, you could have seen that the market was going to go run on buy side liquidity. So the market initially came up and uh, the market initially came up and ran this minor buy side liquidity and then we consolidated for a period and then we ran on our major buy side liquidity forming our high of the day. So our high of the day came in during the lunch session at 1256 having run on our major buy side liquidity at our all time high at 49.31 three quarters. So you can see that the market made that second push up to get into that major buy side liquidity uh, which gave it the steam to end up running uh, much lower. So let's briefly talk about what we had in the PM session and the PM session uh, from 1330 New York local time down to 16, uh, we'll call it the end of the day, it's 1614. That's after the market closes. Um, what happened here? Right. So the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is that we had just run buy side liquidity. Okay, so if you know off the bat that we had already run buy side liquidity, that's a good initial sign that we might turn around and, and run the other side. So it's always a good idea to see the opposite side liquidity pool get taken before you take the opposite position. All right, so some of the observations that would lead me to get short on this. Number one, breakaway gap here and another breakaway gap and we have an institutional order flow entry drill. So as you can see, the market came back up into this SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, traded a few ticks in, but was not able to close into the, into the SIBI. That's what's called an institutional order flow entry drill. And uh, taken with other factors, it's a very strong sign that you're about to have a good move. All right. As we move forward, we see that we ran sell side liquidity here. We ran sell side liquidity here and we initially ran sell side liquidity here. The market then traded up into the PM session and turned around right around this uh, bearish order block inverted wick. We then had another breakaway gap as we traded lower and we were running on more sell side liquidity. We then had a flush down with another sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency, at which point as you come into the PM session, uh, would give you a strong idea we're probably going to have a, a continued move down. All right, so here was our major sell side liquidity here. And you can see that the market ran through that sell side liquidity, initially formed a low, came back up into this prior trading range, and I think you should pay attention to another thing. Here was a fair value gap that came to the side. Uh, notice that this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, the one minute chart respected it perfectly. So again, I want to draw your attention to the fact that you, you should be looking sometimes at candles that are far away. And in this case, when the market turned around again to, to, to take another dive into sell side liquidity, where did it turn around? Exactly within that old buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. And could you have seen that? If you know to cut through candles and you know to look at prior legs, yes, you could have seen that. Okay, the market then formed a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency here. We formed an initial low on this BISI, traded back up into this SIBI and this bearish order block, at which point the market turned around strongly and ran again on further sell side liquidity, forming another sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. We formed a low, minor sell side liquidity that the market came back, ran again, we then took that sell side liquidity to run back up into this order block here and this sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency. When you see that the market was respecting that bearish order block, you could have been a short seller again. And where are we going to guess that the market uh, is going to go? Well, as you can see, we ran this sell side, uh, sell side liquidity you can see here. You need to be following along pretty quickly on my screen. I don't want my videos to be too long. Um, and then again, the market ran further sell side liquidity. If we go over to a 10 minute chart, you can see that ultimately the market came down and tried to make a run on this sell side liquidity here. 
but we ended up uh, rejecting off that rejection block. So we were running on this liquidity located at 4889 spot 75. So overall, a pretty big sell off into the PM session. Um, you had breakaway gaps, you had bearish order blocks, in other words, bearish PD arrays on the one minute chart you could identify were being respected. And so if you're a traditional ICT trader and you're watching your PD arrays, you're familiar with them, breakaway gap, fair value gaps, SIBIs, BISIs, um, order blocks, and rejection blocks, as well as the concept of liquidity, uh, are there trades that you could have taken today? Absolutely. And so I hope that I showed you that on the one minute chart. Uh, you could have been a buyer or a seller today. We did have two-way action, and ultimately I made a profit today trading both sides. So a lot of back-and-forth action today. Guys, I would say it was a day trader's market today. Um, really beautiful sort of setup on the one-minute chart, in my opinion. Finally, the, the last thing I guess I will show you is the regular trading hours gap. So we go down to our five-minute chart and have a look at our regular trading hours gap which was here. And you can see that the market was somewhat respecting the regular trading hours gap. I mean, not exactly, but could you have potentially used the regular trading hours gap along with other uh, PD arrays to, to get where you needed to be going? Yeah, right here. There, there you could have had some confirmation. You see that 10 minute regular trading hours gap as we came back up into that 50% which was also this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and also an inverted fair value gap here. Um, as you saw, the market was turning lower. You probably could have guessed we were at least going to go run this sell side liquidity here. So you could have also used the regular trading hours gap to get you where you needed to go. Guys, my referral links are in the description box below. Please make sure to go use them. Also, I post a lot on my community posts, so you, you should read those as well. Use my referral links. Bye-bye.